All right. Uh, hello and welcome to Gotham Sound TV. Um, I am very, very excited to be talking to uh, Ari Krupnik and David Guy of Dish TC. Say hello, fellas. Hello. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, <clears throat> let's get into it. Uh, Dish, T Dish TC is uh, a time code box. So when I first proposed this, uh, that we do this, um, and, and I should say that you guys are um, in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign for your Dish TC box. Um, actually, Ari, how, many, how much time is left to go? Six days. Six days, okay. Um, so, uh, six days left on another time code box. So, uh, everybody here wanted to know why another time code box. And so I said, I'm going to ask you, I have my reasons. I know what I'm excited about, but fellas, why another time code box? Well, um, so when I first came to, I came to film from technology. I used to work with Tesla, I used to work with Sun Microsystems, I spent 15 years in Silicon Valley. And when I came to film, the thing that was just absolutely surprising to me was the amount of manual labor that goes into production. And there are places that where it's inevitable, you have to do things by hand, but there are places that I looked at and I said, I can take some of this manual work and automate it away. So you don't have to, you don't have to do this by hand. You don't have to worry about babysitting the machine where you can focus on the story that you want to tell you're working with the actors you're working with the talent with the interviewer the, you know wh whoever it is you're working work on the story not not on on babysitting the technology and so time code in particular it's not the time code so much as as the editing when you go when you go in post this this you have to sync stuff and i'm like people still do this by hand and i'm like this is it's insane you know, we have we have sync sound now for 90 years, and people still do this by hand. So uh, I said, "What's the? How can I? How can I make this into a technology problem and not a process problem?" And so the result is this box that has it has exactly one control in it. That's the frame rate, and everything else you don't need to worry about. All the different settings that that you may have to deal with on on all the other boxes that you're familiar with. You don't have to deal with any of them. Select your frame frame rate. You turn it on. You plug it in, and you go. And and everybody's what? in sync. So there's no app. There's no jamming. Uh, there is no app for that. So what kind of uh, magic sauce do you have? Well, like it says right here, there's no magic in any of this. Um, we take satellite signals so, so, so sometimes I, I, I tell this story and people say oh you launched your own satellites and i like that story but but it's not uh, it's not true uh we take satellites that are already in orbit uh these are your tax dollars at work the government has already put them uh, in orbit and they transmit all kinds of interesting information but as a side effect of what they do they also transmit very accurate time and so we take this time it's a global time and ev everybody always has the same time anywhere on the planet um, and so we latch onto this time, and and then and that's you can say that there there there's jamming. It's just that the jamming happens entirely automatically in real time. Every one and a half seconds, you get a resync, and everybody gets the exact same resync anywhere in the world. So you don't have to touch them physically. You don't have to jam them. Um, you don't now, have to configure anything. You I can jam from them if if you want to jam something else from it. You can, mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, but you don't ever have to jam. Dishes themselves. So GPS uh, is what is the technology. GPS is one of the technologies. Mm -hmm. GPS is one of the one of the technologies that we use. Um, it, GPS is kind of a funny thing, as there's so many people who have experience with GPS, and and it's it's been around for a long time, and and people have, uh, kind of, especially in the early days, have had kind of spotty experience with it, um, and so sometimes people kind of talked about you know. Does it work in bad weather? Does it work indoors? And and it does. And part of the reason is the technology itself got a little better, but also it's only one of the constellations that we listen to. So there are um, there are all these other satellites in space that also transmit accurate time. And so we take the best signal that we can hear at any point and use that. And is the kind is there like a generic term like I've I've read about GNSS? Is that a, is that what we're talking yes, about? Yes, that, like that that is the term. Okay. Um, 
cool. Now uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate in this whole exchange. So um, I have a shoot uh, in a in a underground car park, a garage. Uh, you know, it's a stunt sequence. Um, so yeah, I mean, come on. I'm going to turn that thing on, and it's not going to work, right? Uh, so we actually found that in in a lot of parking structures they do work. Um, uh, you you go far enough underground and they won't. But we found they them to work in surprising places. Uh, like I'm under a roof right now and it's you know, it's, it's working just fine. Um, uh, there are places where it will not work. If you go inside a shipping container and you close the door, you're not going to get a signal. Mm -hmm. That I, I there there are places where it's not going to work. You go on a, on a submarine and you dive, you're not going to get a signal. Um, I mean, we haven't tested it, but I'm 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 pretty sure that you're not going to get a. Signal you don't have to be a physicist, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, but it's just okay. But right. but uh, okay. Submarine aside, um, uh, let's say you let's say there was like some scene in a shipping container. There is a mm -hmm. way around that, right? Of course, there is. Uh, so the um, uh, the way this works is it has the satellite antenna, which is where the name Dish comes from. It's like a satellite dish. We were actually going to make them round. Initially, we were, we were planning to make the, the boxes themselves round so they would look like a dish, and then we decided that it was too gimmicky. Yeah. Why? But the name's... <laughs> good. Um, so, so if you have uh, a good um, a good signal, then, then you're updating all the time. But if you have an interruption in the signal, the, the clock keeps running. And it's the same kind of temperature-compensated uh, crystal that you find in the high-end uh, time code equipment. So it will hold you over for several hours. Um, uh, and even inside a shipping container, you will probably get a fix, you know, maybe maybe once an hour, but you will get a fix. And so every time you get a fix, uh, every time you get a signal through, it will, uh, the, the clock becomes accurate again. And so um, e eventually, if you've been out of signal for too long, we, we monitor the temperature and, the, and how long you've been out and, and all kinds of, uh, if, if we say we haven't had a signal in too long and we're not sure that, uh, that uh, that we're accurate anymore will tell you, but um, it's it's good for about six hours. Even if you just completely went in a, into a Faraday cage, if you got a fix first and then got into your Faraday cage, um, you're still good. So one workflow might be to uh, power it on outside. If you were at all worried about this, power it on outside, and then you can take it inside. Um, temperature compensated crystal doesn't matter about temperature changes, and and you're sure to get a fix. And then uh, you could use it. All right. Uh, I, I like this. And, and we're getting into um, why I think post-COVID, this is really key. Because uh, we're seeing a fair amount of workflows where um, remote camera packages are, are kind of deposited at an actor's house. And uh, they're shooting in um, you know 4K, but streaming... Uh, to a control room, or sometimes it's different people's houses even. Um, and there could be a sound mixer making a mix. Um, there could be uh, a couple of different remote uh, signals coming in where they're doing a line cut. And now we can have uh, the Dish TC at the actor's house. They're not technical people. Uh, necessarily, so we don't want to have to burden them with futzing with uh, a time code box. We can have that same exact time code be in the control room or wherever the technical personnel are. Am I right? And just by turning it on, they have identical time code. So you can have a proxy and you can have the high resolution. That's exactly right. So we had um, uh, we, we, so we, we had a number of people test the system before we went to Kickstarter. Uh, one of uh, one of the groups uh, was shooting. Uh, Will uh, Wernick is the is the um, he, he he was shooting. Uh, he, uh, uh, last month, actually, they were doing a, a a COVID feature. They shot a feature in LA uh, where they were shooting in four different locations, and uh, it was um, uh, it was all real time. Uh, but the actors never, the talent never saw each other except on their screens. Um, and so they were going to drive around. They, what, what they were going to do was get locket boxes and, and sync them in the one location and then have people drive all over town and deliver them and go do this again after lunch. Um, and then we said, well, how about here, here's, here are four boxes. You, you can have these for your shoot. And so they did that. And it was all inside, you know, 
the same town, although on, on different ends of, of LA and you know, you know how late traffic gets. Um, and, and so they did that and all of the four locations were in complete sync the whole time. So they never had to, they never even have to deliver anything during the day. Right. Um, we had another, uh, group that works with, um, they can't, they can't say the name of their client, but they refer to it as a, um, a major tech company with a big music platform. Um, and they shoot interviews where, uh, they used to fly people out, but they don't anymore. Uh, and so they have, uh, they have the, the subject of the interview was in New York and they were shooting it from LA. The interviewer was in LA. And so they, they did this thing where they shipped out the, the camera kit. Um, and again, all the footage came back with, you know, in perfect sync. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's huge. Uh, I think, and that's really um, going to be super important now going going forward. That ability to do that without having to manipulate anything or log in or app or anything. Um, so, well, gonna, by, by the way, uh, uh, Josh Tucker, who was doing the the coast to coast interview, uh, recorded a little video. I think it's about three minutes, three and a half, talking about his experience. Um, and if you want to have a link to that uh, for your audience, um, uh, they, they they may find his experience. Uh, he's sharing his experience. Interesting. We, uh, we will try and get that link up in the comments, if not uh, absolutely soon after the video. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm curious to to watch that video myself. Um, all right, I'm going to switch to back to Devil's Advocate now. Um, Kickstarter. Uh, our industry, our customers are weary of uh, you know both uh, investing in a in a uh, what could be a speculative um, you know endeavor uh, and also. How do we know that um, even if you can bring this product to market, that you'll be around to support it? Uh, well, there's inherent risk in new technology. There's no, there's no way around it. Um, and Kickstarter in particular is, is always on the cutting edge. Uh, but we do, uh, we do a lot of work to mitigate this risk. And so one of the things we're doing, this is actually the second version of the product that we did. We did a Kickstarter last year, and we made a box that, I don't know if you, on this webcam it probably looks the same as as the new one. Um, so we did the books and we knew it wasn't going to be perfect, but we wanted to bring something out to market and get feedback from the real world. And so we made we went through through one iteration of this, you know, the entire manufacturing process, the entire everything. And we had a successful Kickstarter last year, and we made this books, and um, we got a lot of feedback from the real world about how we can improve it. And so what we're doing now is the second generation of the product with all that feedback from real paying customers in, in, in the real world um, who, um, who, who have told us how we can improve the product. And we, we intend to continue doing that, to continue iterating on the product and making it better. Um, the, um, the good news is that for us, we have already set up the entire manufacturing line. We have all the relationships with the vendors, with the contractors, with with people who make the plastic, with people who make the circuit boards. This is this is all there. Uh, the engineering is done. A lot of the Kickstarters are, you know, people bring ideas to Kickstarter at different stages. And sometimes it's it's something that's ready to go, and sometimes it's an idea. And um, and I think it's really important to have a place where people can bring ideas and say, I have this idea. I don't know if it's going to work. But but I, I I want to hear if this is something that people want me to work on, and I think it's really important to have a space for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we're doing is is a little bit past that. So we have um, these came off an assembly line. These uh, you know we only made a small number of them, but uh, these came off an assembly line. These these are not handmade. This is you know this is all injection molded plastic. This is all this is all uh, industrial production. Um, so uh, they're all the all the engineering is done. Uh, we, we're not asking for, for money for us to continue doing our research and development. We're our, essentially, we're asking the market is, the question we're asking is, is this something we should manufacture? We're not asking, you know, should we design this? Should we try this out? We're asking, is this something we should manufacture? I think that's um, a great a distinction. I think that's a great distinction. And in terms of, uh, let's say the market says, yes, um, what assurance do we have that you want to be around to support it? Uh, we've already been around in this this project in particular. We've already been at that for almost two years, so we've we've stuck with it through the through the happy and the less happy. And I know a lot of people right now 
who are who have had ideas that they've been working on that that have suddenly decided to go somewhere else. But we decided that you know it's like there are challenges right now. Everybody's dealing with with a lot of challenges. But we decided that we wanted to bring this out even now because we feel that this is something that's important and something that we want we want to to have in the world. Yeah, I think. Um... Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I remember meeting you guys, uh, I believe, at the last two ATL, um, at least the last Sounds ATL. Yeah. Um, and I and remember... That, well, Nick was here in Dallas recently. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of months ago, be, be, before before all this Yeah, happened. time time has a funny thing. But And I remember the version where um, it was f locked at one frame rate and you got the feedback that that wasn't going to fly. And so now this is the second iteration. Um, and yes, Speaking of iteration, I think it's also worth talking about uh, that this is not your first collaboration uh, with a product. Um, you guys uh, have brought other products in different markets. You can go back about what, 10 years now. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, David, do you, want, do you want to say a couple words about... I've done all the talking. <laughs> your uh, turn. Hi, this is David. Yeah, so Ari and I uh, started working together in the medical space on endoscopic video, and Ari developed a way for this to be wirelessly beamed across a procedure room to get rid of wires in the uh, operating room and the procedure rooms. So uh, Ari and I have done a good uh, job working together on this. We're excited about the new product. One of the things that the product design has is a, a way to update the firmware. So if we were to make any changes along the way, uh, it's easy to upgrade that. And uh, I've already put together a nice plan on being able to um, handle any warranty issues. Uh, we're not going to have those field fixed. We're going to just ship you a different one. Um, so we've tried to design this in a way that's easy for the customer. As we have iterative changes to the product, we can, we plan to continue to push those changes out. Um, if it's firmware, we'll push those out uh, through the uh, updates. And then Ari has a kind of suite of products that he plans to develop around automation of the film industry. And this is really one of the first pieces of that. Mm. Uh, very, very cool. Um... I mean, I, you know, at this point, I'm going to see if anybody um, has any questions in, on Facebook. Um, and there's usually like a minute delay between when I say that and when people actually hear that on Facebook. So um, in the meantime, I would like to switch gears. Um, unless you have anything else, unless we, we haven't covered anything about the product. Oh, I guess battery life. We should talk about battery life. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um we uh, we get about 40 hours uh, of battery life out of two AA's. So of course it depends on on the batteries. But if you have if you use high quality AA's, that's um, that's the battery life what we get. And just to be clear, 40 hours on alkaline high quality or lithium high alkaline. quality? Alkaline. That's yeah. that's great. Uh, lithium presumably you'd have even greater. Um, we uh, so. We plan to do to publish a, a more comprehensive kind of graphs of, of different batteries, the, the, the time versus discharge. Um, but naturally, the higher your capacity, the longer you get to run. Th this um, uh, it, it's a relatively low current uh, product. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't transmit any. Well, so one of the one of the things that that is really working for us is that we don't have to transmit anything. We, we only receive. So you have to spend some power on decoding the signal, but you don't have to spend any power transmitting anything. So if you're in a mesh environment, um, if you're transmitting, if, you, if each of the boxes is a transceiver, then one of the trade-offs is, uh, there's some useful things you can do with that, but one of the trade-offs is that since you're transmitting, you have to spend power on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and in my mind makes the product even more attractive. If I don't literally don't have to think about my time code, uh, at all, and and forty hours is plenty of time. Um, I think that's, that, that's great. Not thing. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And I'm 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 pretty good at that. Um, so I do want to mention too that people should check your website out. Um, I want to make a special mention to any manufacturers that might see this uh, video because they they plan on selling um, modules. Is that right? I saw on your website. Uh, so you, you could have this OEM'd in, in your camera or um, your uh, recorder or whatever, you, whatever what have you, um, which is exciting to me. Um, okay, so we have a question. 
uh, if I was to use this at an underground subway, will it lose GPS? Okay, so um, uh, Dallas, uh, David is in Dallas, and, and Ari, you're in Atlanta. Um, but you guys have have you guys ridden the New York City subway? Uh, yes. All right. Yes. So not, yes. not, 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 not with not with the dish. I have not had anyone take it into uh, into the subway, so I uh, I cannot speak from experience. All right. Um, it, it's challenging. The the depending on which subway line, it, I mean, it it could be underground for a while, but again, uh, even the E train, um, even the E train. I'm just thinking um, uh, is about a hundred feet, I think, underground. But it does pop out above. So if you were continuously traveling, you'd be fine. Um, the the, yeah. the, answer, the answer is if if you have concerns about this. Uh, and there are there are places where you will lose signal. There there is no uh, there's there's I, I, you know I can dance around this, but there are places where you will lose signal. And so the answer to that is um, if you are going to go into a place where you worry about losing signal, turn it on while you're still on the surface. Get a, get a fix. You know it takes several seconds to get a fix. Thirty seconds if you're in a in a tight spot. Um, get a fix, then go in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and you and, and if you need you don't need to carry your entire setup up and down, right? You just need to take this box, and this this needs to get a fix. Everything else, you know, whatever it's attached to, doesn't need to move. Doesn't have to move. Your cart doesn't have to move if you're on a camera. The camera doesn't have to move. Just just the one thing. What's... Um, I've had a lot of people sort of, sort of sort of in in relevant to this. Mm-hmm. Um, early satellite systems had a lot of trouble in what people refer to as urban canyons. So you're in the middle of Manhattan on the surface, but but you are you are surrounded by tall buildings and people had an awful time trying to get a signal there. So I'm happy to report that this is not uh, nearly as, as much of an issue as it used to be. Um, and you basically uh, it, it's basically still being an issue. And how it got solved is is kind of interesting. It's the the signal is the same signal, but the software got a lot better about uh, separating the signal from the noise. So it got a lot better about separating. Uh, you used to get multipath reflections from the from the buildings, and 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 it would ruin the accuracy of the signal. The software got better at at undoing all of that damage to the signal and extracting good signal from a lot of noise. So the the current systems, the the the, the antennas that we use the the modules that we use have sold that and i think it is worth reiterating too that uh it is not just gps that it relies on there's a whole there's a whole location uh network of of stuff that it's relying on that that is very true and thank you for mentioning this um gps is one of the systems that we're monitoring but it's only one of them and uh Listening to multiple constellations makes it makes the system a lot more available. So again, in, in early GPS systems, one of the problems was uh, you there were there were very few satellites, and if you just happened to be in a place where you can only see two, you couldn't get a good fix. Um, but with the multiple systems that we're, we're monitoring, there are always satellites in sight. And even if you're in a place where the, the, in an urban canyon, or if you're in a building with you know, you only have one window, and it's kind of on a, on a far wall. Um, even if you're under under a metal roof, metal awning, if you have some view of the sky, you will get one or another of the satellites will be in view. So, uh, being able to monitor dozens of different satellites um, helps us with availability. Yeah, yeah, I I know this uh, from personal experience uh, in in terms of uh, building little trackers for RF reception and. Uh, I mean the the technology available is is really amazing, and we're able to get a fix in our um, and I'm I I doubt it's the same chip even just the at at the hobbyist level that I'm working at um, you know something in the in the middle of our shop um, where it really can't see any windows um, and this used to be an old bakery um, it's able to get a fix quickly and no problem so it's 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 pretty amazing. I think, Peter, I think it's very important for you to share this with your audience and, and emphasize this. If I say this, right, who, who, who like, I, they, they don't know me from anyone, right? But uh, the technology has improved a lot in the last 10 years. And I, I think some people are clearer on it than others. And you're 
firsthand experience is really well, I, valuable. I mean, I, I've been there, and and if somebody, if anybody's curious and wants to go down a really deep rabbit hole, just Google GNSS chipset data sheet. Um, you know, and you'll you'll see it. I mean, you'll you'll see what what's going on behind the scenes in a relatively um, you know what looks to be really straightforward. Um, yeah, I'm in Chicago, and it's a common thing. It will it happen? I mean, I think you know the thing is, um, we'll we will follow up with some people. I mean, and I'll forward them their contact info if if um, if they're cool with it. But they should test it. I mean, um, you know, I I know um, that GPS can drop uh, in urban areas, but um, if I think I understand the technology that you guys are using, this is this is a different level, and also. Um, you know, we're not trying to get a location fix. You're trying to get uh, a, a time fix. And that's also has a different set of um, requirements. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important. I, I think the most important thing, and this is why I, um, I kind of, it is true that GPS is one of the systems that we use in, in the data collection. But I, I sort of want to get people off that particular acronym. Uh, Because it drags with it all kinds of experiences that are just completely irrelevant. People being steered into train tracks and stuff. You're on a train and you go into a tunnel and you come out of the tunnel two miles down the road and the GPS still thinks that you're two miles down the road. That's that's a big error. Two two miles is a big error if you're trying to establish location. In our world, you got a good fix. You get into a tunnel. You come out of the tunnel two and a half minutes later. For two and a half minutes, you've been running on your on your TX uh, T- TCXO. You come out and you still have a good time. And two minutes later, you get another fix and and you resync the clock. You, this the clock has not drifted at all. The clock kept running the whole time. So the the this is this is um, I just want to emphasize GPS is one of the things that we're using, but people's experience with it is. It 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 it's it's a different we're trying to achieve a different result than what people usually try to do with GPS. I agree. I mean I think we'll have to get this into people's hands and they'll have to see for themselves. I will uh it's it might be worth going a little bit into the weeds, um, in terms of like cold fix and, and hot fix. And the reason is I want to lead into uh, one question, which is, um, does it have a backup battery to maintain the time code when you change the disposable batteries? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 it does. Thank you for asking that. Um, so how much into the weeds do you want to go? I, 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 have, a, I have a spiel, about a half hour long spiel that I, <laughs> that I can do about this. Um, you know, we're at the 30 minute mark, and I think uh, that is the internet attention span. But let's, let's do one weed. Um, so to know what time it is, you know, you need to know where you are. Um, uh, you, you need to be able, um, you need to know which satellites are in view, uh, where you are at a given time. Uh, every satellite transmits on a different frequency and you're going to cycle through the different frequencies to get, to get, uh, to get the signal from a satellite. So if you don't know where you are and you don't know what time it is, you're going to have to cycle through all the different frequencies until you get enough satellites that you randomly that that are going to give you a fix. But if you know roughly where you are and roughly what time it is, then you know which satellites you expect to be visible. And so you can skip listening to the satellites that you don't care about that are, uh, you know, literally in underground in, in, in the nadir. So, um, so with the backup battery that you mentioned, there's a real, a, a small real time clock, um, on the board, and it it keeps track of what time it is. It's not accurate enough to uh, run time code off of, but it's accurate enough for when you wake up to know which satellites to be listening to. And so, uh, a cold start is thirty seconds. Um, yeah, depending on where you are, it can be less. Um, a hot start is almost instantaneous. It's a, it's a two to five seconds um, because you don't have to to do the whole long startup sequence. So I will play devil's advocate for a second. And so if we are doing a shoot in a, uh, a lead mine, uh, deep underground, um, I should not change batteries while I'm underground. Is that fair to say? Um, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you're going to go longer than 40 hours in the lead mine, you probably have other issues. 
Yes, um, agreed. And um, I, I just wanted okay. to be extreme. If you continue to shoot in 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 a lead mine, you probably have bigger health problems than that. Yes. Um, but yeah. Um, right. yeah. Um. So to to uh, to make it clear, the backup battery goes keeps going if you turn off and take out the the primary batteries. Uh, Forty hours in a lead mine is your cloak is going to drift. Um, but if you take out the back, I, um, uh, I and that's a I fair have. point too. But if you happen to go underground at the thirty ninth hour, uh, you might want to change batteries before you go so underground. Here's, here's what the board looks like. Uh, this is the little the little battery here. Um, I don't know how well you can see it. This it's a little quarter inch um, battery that that keeps. Um, and it's good for about four days. So you can take the batteries out four days later. Um, you put new batteries in, you still have a hot fix. Nice. Uh, it's not, and, and the, the limitation is not so much that the battery life, we can't give you more battery. We could give you more battery life, but after four days, the the predictions that the math, the mathematical model makes about where the satellites are go stale. So, so if, if you, because they move and, 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 you know, and, and, and you have to calculate all the orbits and the thing is only good for about three and a half, four days after that, it has to give up and, and recalculate everything like it didn't have, like it, like it, like it forgot where it was. But I think most use case scenarios, it would work. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is, this is like we're talking extreme and really just to illustrate the point of, of uh, you know, you do have to think about it a little bit, but really not on a day to day basis. Like I said, I, I can talk about this all day. I, I, I can geek out on this. All right. I, I think um, we, we should wrap it up because I think, um, you know, if people want to know more, um, we'll put your contact info and certainly the website uh, in comments. Um, and I just want to say it is um, it's really it's good to talk to you. And it's, it's exciting to see this product mature and, and come to market. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, one thing I was, uh, people always ask how accurate this thing is. And, and, um, uh, it, so the satellite signal is accurate. Once, once you incorporate, once you integrate all the satellites, it's accurate to 60 nanoseconds. Um, so it's like, it's, it's one half millionth of a frame, uh, right. at, at 30 frames per second. Right. Um, but so that's, that, how, that's two so, so units. Always, what is that? That's two units on on either side of the globe. Let's say would be accurate either than that. the globe or 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 three inches from each other, you right. get the same accuracy. So w well within a frame, let's say. <laughs> Five hundred thousand of them in the frame, yes. But over time, uh, it can stay. Um, it can stay. So six hours is within one frame. Let's say it doesn't get a fix within six hours. Uh, what's the it, accuracy? Yeah, so so if um, you get about the same, if if you really if you really go into a lead chamber, um, you get the same accuracy as you would with with any sort of high end uh, time code system. But if you get even even the tiniest bit of signal anywhere during that time, you reset back, and then and then you you will if if you have any kind of view of the satellites at all, you you can be running for months without drifting. Yeah, got it. No, I, I think it's, I'm excited. Um, all right. And Jared did put the uh, website in the comments. Thank you, Jared. And um, uh, I would use it on a rally. I'm just reading a comment. I would use it on a rally. Lots of cameras on the exterior, many unmanned. Um, and uh, it would work for sync, I think is what that uh, autocorrect is meant to say. Um, cool. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, you, Atlanta, Dallas, everything's. What's what is your world like? Everything. Well, so the funny thing is that that we we have been doing this work remotely before it was cool. Uh -huh. uh, the the gentleman who, who does the hardware design for this lives in England, and we've we've done this entire design entirely on you know Skype and GitHub and and all these tools that people are suddenly discovering. We've been doing this all along. So in that sense, we. This hasn't affected us at all. We just do our, you know, daily or, or weekly this, um, and this has hasn't uh, had an impact at all um, in an in an odd kind of way. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's in, it's interesting to see what uh, 
workflows are are now kind of everybody's adopting as normal and there's some people that like you said had this has no effect on but uh yeah um well uh, i appreciate you guys uh having a second iteration of this product and coming on and talking to us and um yeah anybody has any questions uh follow up we'll forward it to you and um yeah and uh i'll just um i'll sign off we appreciate uh, the time to speak to your to your audience. Thank you so much, Peter. Yeah, you bet. And, and to you. It, it, it is all, Peter. It is always a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> I um, just on a on a personal level, it, it is always a pleasure, and I want to emphasize that. I likewise, and I, I yes, I feel uh, kindred kindred spirit. Um, all right, I'm going to sign off, and I'm just going to say thanks for watching, everybody. Please stay tuned. Uh, we got lots of exciting stuff, um, and uh, stay healthy, and uh, hope uh, I hope everybody's well. And um, thanks for watching, everybody.